Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Robin or A Hobbit's Reading List and today we are going to talk about the books that I read in June. So I'm going to go in order from when I finished the book but I do read books at the same time. Usually I'm listening to an audiobook and while reading a physical book so I do you know make some progress that way. But first I want to go over my statistics. So the spreadsheet that I use to track some of these uh, is a little broken and I don't understand why and so I haven't fixed it. <laughs> but I can promise that this information is accurate as much as I can because I'm not good at math, but I did use a calculator. So in the month of June, I read 1,035 pages so that's all the physical books that I read. I listened to 36 hours and 10 minutes on audiobook, uh, which is pretty good for June. So I also had one DNF, which we will talk about. And this is the first time that I've DNF'd in at least six months, uh, if not more. <laughs> I also have had an average rating of 4.14 stars. So the month overall was pretty good. Okay, sorry, I had to change angles because I had to plug my camera in. <laughs> so my ratings for the month averaged at 4.14 stars, which is pretty good for the month. I know that there were definitely some, some books that impacted that and that maybe got Maybe I was feeling too generous now that I think about it. I would probably change the score on at least one of the books, but that's fine. <laughs> My most read genres for the month, which is kind of sad. <laughs> uh, my most read genres were classics and LGBT. I think I read three classics technically, and then only to LGBT, which is not entirely accurate. Storygraph goes like straight month to month. It doesn't do what I do and say whatever month I read the most in is the month that gets like assigned. And so I know that it didn't count the last uh, book that I read in June as like towards the genres. So technically it's three LGBT, which in June is sad. I wanted more, but the TBR was not nice to me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go through the books that I read in June. Starting with The Boston Girl by Anita Diamond. This is about an 87 year old woman reflecting on her teenage to early 20 years. It's a coming of age story about this young Jewish girl whose parents are immigrants and her struggle to balance being like a true American girl because she's the only person in her family that was born in America versus the influence of her family and, and the struggles that they go through. And I, I did really enjoy it. This is the second time I read it. I originally read it when I was converting and the thing that was cool about it was actually so it's it's called the Boston Girl it takes place in Boston but <laughs> I took it with me when I went to Boston and I was actually staying in Rockport which is about an hour east of Boston it's right on the coast and <laughs> a, a good portion of the the plot takes place in Rockport, which was really cool. I, I, w I had a really good time like reading this book in Rockport when it was mentioning Rockport. So that, that was a lot of fun. So whenever I can do that, I really enjoy it. <laughs> uh, I ended up giving The Boston Girl four stars. We, I had never rated it before. I, I did really enjoy it. I know that some people didn't enjoy it as much as me because I did read it for the book club that I run at my temple and that's that's fine it's more of a nostalgia read for me and I chose it because it is set in summer and I was going to Boston and it was entirely for selfish reasons but 
that's fine. The next book that I read, well, read, we're at my DNF, which was so disappointing. It's The Subterraneans by Jack Kerouac. I really liked On the Road. Like, it is annotated to hell. Like, I loved it. And I thought The Subterraneans would be similar, because it was written over a space of, of three days and three nights. And uh, On the Road was written in a similar sort of, like, just stream of consciousness. Like, let's go and get it done. Like, I think On the Road was written in a week. I could be wrong. I will put the accurate information somewhere. <laughs> But it just wasn't as good. Like, I was able to read 10 pages, and in those 10 pages, I think there may have been two periods. Like, it was just a rambling mess, in my opinion. If people have read The Subterraneans and enjoyed it, that's awesome. I'm very impressed that you got through it. But I, I just couldn't. To be fair, I was also reading it in the ER waiting for my husband to get tests to see if he had blood clots. So I was kind of stressed and so I didn't have like the patience maybe, but I also just haven't felt compelled to, to pick it up and try again. So I, I am DNFing it. I finished my first audiobook of June with Here All Along by Sarah Hurwitz, which is a nonfiction about Sarah's journey to sort of rediscover Judaism. She was born Jewish. She went to, you know, Jewish education. She went to synagogue growing up, but her family wasn't necessarily very religious. And so she refers to herself as like a lapsed Jew, where she only goes for the high holy days. And then when she was about 36, she went through a bad breakup and took an intro to Judaism class for something to do, I guess. And she saw how, how beautiful the, the traditions and rituals are and how meaningful. And so she went on this journey to make sense of Judaism for herself, which is, is sort of what Judaism is all about. It's like, it's all about questioning and interpreting and, and taking it in. And there, there are different denominations who have different ideas about like what that means. But I really appreciate it. I thought she did a really great job of explaining everything that she had experienced and it, it was just really good. So I gave it 4.5. I, I find it really hard to rate nonfiction because while this is an educational book, it's also about Sarah's journey and so I don't want to like look at it and be like, mm, and like judge it. So, <laughs> but I, I, it was really good. So I gave it a 4.5. I highly recommend it for people who, who have some knowledge of Judaism, but want to deepen it. I, I, I don't necessarily agree that it's an introductory book. So take that as you will. I then started listening to Maurice by Ian e. Forster. Maurice is about Maurice. <laughs> we meet him when he's like 14. And he gets the sex talk from a teacher at school, which is very uncomfortable. <laughs> and even sort of then he realizes that like, yeah, but like, does that really apply to me? Because that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> uh, because he, he is a gay man and Maurice is all about him coming to terms with being a gay man and, and entering into relationships and figuring out what he needs in a partner. And I, I did really enjoy it. I felt like the pacing was a bit fast. I would have liked, I, I would have liked more focus on the second half of the book, quite honestly. Uh, if you've watched my vlogs, you'll know why. <laughs> but I did think it was well written. I did think it was, it's absolutely beautiful. I thought it did a good job of sort of portraying this like, it's like queer love, like almost obsession. Like, I, I don't know if, I'm sure other people, other queer people have experienced this, but like, I remember the first time that I like fell in love with another girl and it, it, it did border on this like obsessive thing. And I don't know if it was because it was with a girl or because I was a teenager, I don't know. 
but I thought Forrester did a really good job portraying that, whichever type of love it is. <laughs> so I did give it a four because I, I, I thought it was really good. And if anyone's looking for a classic book that has like explicit LGBT, I, I highly recommend this. Although I will say like, because I do read a good amount of classics and I'm used to like reading subtext be like, mm, this is a little queer coded. <laughs> it was a little jarring to read a book that I know was written in like the 1910s and have it be so explicitly gay. Cause like all of a sudden, well, I mean, all, not all of a sudden there was a buildup, but like there were two boys kissing and I was like, <gasps> Oh my god, even though I, I read gay romance and gay erotica all the freaking time, but like, just because I know when it was written, it was, it was a little jarring, but it was, it was nice. I, I actually sort of enjoyed, like, that level of surprise. So, yeah. Next, I read A Ghost in the Throat by Dorian the Grifa. This is about, this is a memoir of... Dorian's obsession. I, I was very obsessive this month, apparently. Huh. Um, <laughs> but it's about Dorian's obsession with this poet from, I believe, the 18th century named Eileen de Nicconel, who wrote this, I believe it's called a keen, for her husband who was murdered. And it's a, it's a amazing poem. It's it's at the end of the book, so I appreciated getting to read the full thing. But Dorian, you know, learned about it in school and she's like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> and then later on when she becomes a mother and she is very much like just a home taker, she she clings to this poem as something that is hers and then she works on translating it from Irish to English. And then she works on finding more about the poet's life because besides the fact that she wrote this poem, nothing else is really like she's, she disappears in history, uh, like a lot of women do. And so Dorian really tries to find anything that she can about her. And so I appreciate it for a lot of reasons. One, because I have also experienced this like obsessive need to know more about a historical figure. Like I went through a whole phase in my senior year in high school where I was absolutely obsessed with Anne Boleyn. Uh, I may have to show you, I actually have like a whole section of my bookshelf that is about Anne Boleyn. I have at least, at least 15 books. <laughs> So, um, so I get that, but also I thought it was just a really, like, I loved the acknowledgement that women, despite the fact that they contribute to history, they're, they're only there for what they did. Like we have whole biographies about men and about all the like stupid things they did before they became important but we don't have that for women. And that's so upsetting. So I, I just really appreciate it. I thought it was so well written. Dorian is a poet herself and I love when poets write novels because it's so lyrical and so beautiful. And so you can tell by the way I'm gushing about this that I gave it five stars because I, I just thought it was amazing and I, I really recommend people read it. And then, so I finished another audiobook. This one was, it, it was fine. It was fine. I'll say right now, I gave it a three star. It was the best lesbian erotica of 2009, edited by Tristan Termino. This is a collection of, I wanna say like 30 short stories all about lesbian erotica. A lot of it was really good. A lot of it was fine. But then there were, and I will fully admit, this is what tanks the rating, because I was probably going to give it, like, a four star or something. But there were a slew of stories towards the end, I want to say, like, five-ish in a row, that just... They bordered on assault for me. I don't think that coercion is sexy. 
I don't think that ignoring people saying no is sexy. Consent is very sexy. And there were just a slew of stories that didn't have that. And were very, like, blatant about it. And it just made me uncomfortable. And honestly, I skipped those stories. And so, like, if at the end it reveals that it was just an elaborate role play, like, cool. But that wasn't obvious. Like, because a lot of times we are in the person's head and so we know what they're thinking and if it was a if it was a role play then they would probably think something about that so yeah it made me it made me uncomfortable I gave it a three star because a lot of it was really well written but I won't read it again because uh, that was disappointing <laughs> so throughout the month of June I was reading The Annotated Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien edited by Douglas Anderson I had to do it throughout the month of June because while The Hobbit is really easy for me to read, I can just blow through it because I, I love the story and it's just easily written. Because of the annotations, it borders on nonfiction for me and so I just read nonfiction slower if it's not an audiobook. So I pretty much read a chapter a day. Like there were there were days that I skipped and I had to catch up. But <laughs> but I did essentially read a little bit most days. And I I really enjoyed it, unsurprisingly. I know I love The Hobbit. And I really enjoyed getting to learn the background information about The Hobbit and, and Tolkien and his influences and how things changed from printing to printing because there were sometimes like language changes and then there were some like just history changes of like like the history of Middle Earth like Tolkien originally wrote something printed The Hobbit and I realized like in the like third printing of like after he'd written Lord of the Rings and more of the lore of Middle Earth he was like well no I have to change I have to change a word in that sentence <laughs> so I, I enjoyed getting to see that I thought that was really fun I, I gave it a 4.5 like I didn't give it a 5 and I <laughs> This may sound stupid to, like, other people who really like Tolkien, but I can't give The Hobbit a five because I have some issues with its pacing. Mostly about how some things are, like, some important things, like the Arkenstone, are not even brought up until, like, right before Bilbo goes into the mountain. Like, I, I have a huge issue with that, and, like, I think part of that is the movie influence because the Arkenstone is such a big deal, but, like, it's still a big deal in the book. It's still a big deal. And so the fact that it's not mentioned the entire time really bothers me. <laughs> so I, I'm just not able to give five stars for that. But 4.5. Like, I, I love The Hobbit. Love the annotations. I thought it was really interesting. If you're wanting more information about the actual writing process and the influences, like, definitely check it out because it was so good. And then the last book that I read in June is The Secret Life of Albert Entwistle by Matt Cain. So I listened to this and I finished it on the 2nd of July. So I read or I listened to most of it in June. That's why it's counted in this one. It was so cute. It was so cute. So Secret Life of Albert Entwistle is about a man called Albert. And whistle. <laughs> he is 64, soon to be 65, and he's informed by his employer, the Royal Post, that when he turns 65, he'll be forced into retirement. And this makes him panic a bit because he's built his entire life around being a postman because he is a closeted gay man with some internalized homophobia. Uh, because of how he was raised, he grew up in the he grew up in the 1970s, where queer people were highly prejudiced against, and uh, he had a whole his father was a cop, and there was a whole thing, so he has that going on. But he has been in love before. When he was about 16, he was in a relationship with another boy, and when he's trying to figure out what he's going to do with his life when he's forced into retirement he wants to find this ex-boyfriend of his and apologize for some things that happened but maybe see if there's something there and along the way he 
opens himself up to other relationships with people and and forges stronger connections with his community and it's just really really cozy like I highly recommend reading this in like January ish because like that's where the plot really takes off but it just if it, it felt so nice listening to it like I couldn't stop smiling there's very few like horrible things that happen a lot of it is just like I, I view it as a reminder that like people can be good <laughs> like that's pretty much how I, I look at it it's like everyone well not everyone most people in this book are just lovely they're just nice people and that's really refreshing to read <laughs> every now and then like I kept expecting something bad to happen and while there were there were bad things like it wasn't devastating it didn't destroy me and that was just nice you know that was nice so I, I gave it a 4.5 I wanted just like a little bit more at the end but it was still really good I I really recommend it I had a lot of good books this month you know for the most part <laughs> there are some exceptions those are the books that I read in June it wasn't nearly as queer as I wanted unfortunately but I got some so that's good. <laughs> like the video, comment if you've read any of these books, if you agree with any of my opinions, if you disagree with any of my opinions, as long as it's respectful, I have no issue talking about the different ways that we read these books. And subscribe, click the notification bell so you get notified every time that I upload a video. I am now working on my July TBR, so I'm posting vlogs every Tuesday of how that's going. And I will check you guys in the next one. Bye.